Welcome to Electron Online and now let's take a look at this. We have a capacitor with uh, two dielectrics side by side, dielectric 1, dielectric 2 with the constants 3 and 4. The area of the plate 0 0.025 square meters, a 10 volt battery attached to it and notice the thickness of the first dielectric is 1 millimeter and the thickness of the second dielectric is 2 millimeters which means the distance between the plates is 3 millimeters. Now, the questions are, what is the capacitance and the energy on the capacitor before we put the dielectric in? Then, what is the capacitance of the capacitor with the dielectric? What is the charge on the plates with the dielectric? What is the electric field in dielectric 1 and in dielectric 2? And finally, what is the energy in, uh, contained within the capacitor when we have the dielectric in there? So this is also with dielectric. Okay, where do we begin? Well, let's begin with A. What is the capacitance? And the capacitance of a physical capacitor is equal to epsilon sub naught times the area of the plates divided by the distance between them. And that, of course, if there's only air between the plates, when we plug in the numbers, this is equal to 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. The units are Coulomb squared per Newton meter squared times and that would be uh, 0 0.025 square meters and divide the whole thing by the distance between about 0 0.003 meters 3 millimeters is that many meters and this is my calculator what is that equal to? 8.85 e to the 12 minus times 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.003 equals and we have 7.38 round it off so this is equal to 7.38 times 10 to the minus 11, and the units for capacitance are ferrets. Okay, that's answer number one. So that is the capacitance of this capacitor without any dielectrics. Secondly, what is the energy contained in there? Now, of course, to know the energy, we need to know how much charge builds up on this capacitor. So assuming we don't have a dielectric, we put a 10-volt battery on it, we know the capacitance, what will be the charge? We know that by definition the capacitance is equal to the charge that is loaded onto the capacitor divided by the voltage that pushes the charge on there, which means that the charge is equal to C times V. The capacitance is equal to 7.38 times 10 to the minus 11 farads multiplied times the voltage of 10 volts, and so that's equal to 7.38 times 10 to the minus 10, and the units are charge or coulombs. I always get coulombs and ferrets mixed up so I gotta be careful I use the right unit for the right variable. Um, K? Oop, yeah. Next, we want to find the capacitance with the dielectric. Now that's a little bit more complicated because we have two dielectrics in there otherwise all we would have to do is simply add the dielectric constant there but with two dielectrics it's not as straightforward. So what we need to do there with the two dielectrics. So now we're working on part C. This was part A. This is part B. Now we're working on part C. So what we need to do there is realize that by definition the electric field is equal to the voltage divided by the, um, the distance between the plates. In this case we can say that the electric field in one here equals the voltage difference across the dielectric divided by the distance of the dielectric. So with other words from here we can say that the voltage equals the electric field times the distance d. So what we can do here is since we're looking for the capacitance and we have the equation, where's my equation here? There it is. The capacitance is equal to charge divided by voltage. What we can do here is simply say that the capacitance is equal to the charge across the capacitor divided by the voltage V1 plus V2. The voltage across the first dielectric plus the voltage across the the second dielectric, that's the total voltage between the plates and that divided into the charge across the plates will give us the new capacitor. Alright, so how do we do that? How do we relate that? Well we can replace V1 and V2, into, we can write that in terms of the electric field and the thickness of the dielectric. And how do we find the, the electric field? Well here we go back to the basics. If we have a capacitor plate that is full of charge, we know that there will be an electric field emanating away, emanating away from the plate, electric field like that, and we can say that the strength of the electric field 
is going to be equal to the charge density per unit area divided by epsilon sub naught. And I'll put a little e sub naught there because that is, of course, if there's no dielectric there. What happens when we add a dielectric? So now we have a dielectric layer. What happens now is that the electric field with the dielectric is now going to be equal to the charge density divided by k times epsilon sub naught. We also know that the charge density is, by definition, charge divided by unit area. <clears throat> so we could say, well, this is equal to uh, charge divided by unit area times epsilon sub naught. And this we can say this is equal to charge divided by unit area times k times epsilon sub naught. So that would be the electric field strength without the, the dielectric. That's electric field strength with the dielectric. Now, since the voltage is equal to the electric field times the distance, we can say, well, this is equal to Q divided by K epsilon sub naught times the area times the distance. And of course, if we want the voltage across the first one, there would be electric field across the first one with the distance of the first one or the thickness. So this is uh, D1 and K1 because D1 and K1, of course, are related to the thickness of the dielectric and the dielectric constant. And so the same thing for the second one, V2 is equal to E2 times D2, which is equal to Q times D2 divided by K2 epsilon sub naught times A. And remember that um, Q is the same for both because it's the charge on the plates. Okay, now we can plug that in here and we get the capacitance is equal to the charge Q divided by Q times D1 over K2 epsilon sub zero times A plus Q times D2 over K, oh, this should be K1, K2 epsilon sub naught times A. And notice we have a Q in the numerator. We have two Qs in the denominator, so it cancels out with those two. And notice we can also factor out in the denominator uh, one over epsilon sub naught times A. So this is equal to one divided by one over epsilon sub naught times A. And what we have left here is D1 over K1 plus D2 over K2. And then finally, we can bring this back up to the numerator and we can say, well, this is equal to epsilon sub naught times A divided by D1 over K1 plus D2 over K2. All right, so now I think we're ready to go ahead and plug in the numbers that we have to find the capacitance of this new capacitor with those two dielectrics side by side. So this is equal to epsilon sub naught 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And I'll leave the units off to make it a little bit easier. The area, 0 0.025. Okay, notice that this is the same thing that we had up here when we were trying to find the capacitance without the dielectric. The only thing that's going to change is the effect of the dielectric in the denominator. So divide by, we have D1, which is 0 0.001 meter, divided by the dielectric constant, which is 3, plus 0 0.002 meters, divided by the dielectric constant, 4. And that will give us the capacitance of this new capacitor. New, of course, because it has two dielectrics in it. All right, let's try that. So we have 0.001 divided by 3 plus 0 0.002 divided by 4 equals. Okay, take the inverse of that. Oh, there we go. Now we have something times 8.85 e to the 12 minus and times 0 0.025 equals. Ah, that's much better. That's 2.655 times 10 to the minus 10 ferrets. Okay, now we know that when we put a dielectric in there, we expect a larger capacitance. Did we get a larger capacitance? Well, here we have 7.38 times 10 to the minus 11. Here we have 2.655 times 10 to the minus 10. Usually, it's by a factor of the dielectric, which is either a 3 or a 4. So if we take kind of an average, 3.5. Uh, notice that the small one is thinner, so it's more, the 4 is more effective. So if you multiply this number, Oh, I should say that number by about three and a half, we should get something very close to this one. And that looks about right. So it's in the ballpark. Okay, so now we've found the capacitance with the dielectric. Now we want to know what the charge is on that.
Okay, how do we find the charge? Well, again, we go back to the same equation right here. We know that the charge, so now we're doing part D, the charge is equal to C times V, and the capacitance now is, the bigger capacitor, 2.655 times 10 to the minus 10, multiplied times 10 volts, which is equal to 2.655 times 10 to the minus 9, and that would be coulombs. So from this value, we now go to this value. So here we have a capacitor that without the dielectric had this capacitance and this much charge collected on it when a 10 volt battery was put across the capacitor. With the dielectric, we now have a, a capacitor that's between three and four times as large and therefore it will have three to four times as much charge across the capacitor plates. Finally, we want the electric field in each of the dielectrics. So for part E, the electric field in one is equal to, and what is the equation for the electric field? Well, the electric field would be equal to this quantity right there. So it would be equal to the charge divided by the dielectric constant times epsilon sub naught and the area. So this would be equal to 2.655 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 3 divided by that would be 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, and the area is 0.025. So that will give us the electric field strength in the dielectric number one. All right, so that would be that number divided by 3, divided by 8.85e to the 12 minus, and divided by 0.025 equals, and we get 400, and that would be volts per meter. All right. What about the electric field in the second one? E sub 2 is equal to, same, Q divided by K sub 2, epsilon sub naught times A, which is equal to 2.655 times 10 to the minus 9, divided by 4, times 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, times 0 0.025. Okay, times 3 divided by 4 equals, and that comes out to 300 volts per meter. All right, now, does that make sense when you think about it? Remember that the electric field is volts per distance, the volt is E times D. So the voltage across the first one would be E1 times D1. So what would that be equal to? That would be equal to 400 volts per meter. And we would multiply that times one millimeter. 0.001 meter, and if we multiply that together, we get, ooh, we get something that's not quite right. I think I have an error somewhere. Let me check that again. Let me check this calculation and see I have this correct here. So 2.655 e to the 9 minus, divided by 3, divided by 8.85 e to the 12 minus, and divide by 0 0.025 equals, ah, 4,000 volts. I forgot a zero somewhere, and this would then be 3,000 volts. 3,000 volts. It's always a good idea to check. So I've missed a zero somewhere, so make this 4,000 volts times 0 0.001 meter, which is equal to 4 volts, which means there's a 4 volt potential difference across the first, and I bet you will get a 6 volts across the second, and sure enough, if we multiply 3,000 volts per meter, times two millimeters, we get a six volt across their additive, four plus six equals 10, equals the potential difference across the battery. So we know we did that correctly. And finally, how much energy is stored on the dielectric? Well, the energy stored, that would be part F, the energy stored U is equal to one half times Q times V, it would be one half times the charge, 2.655 times 10 to the minus nine, times V, which is 10, and so it would be 2.655 e to the 9 minus times 5 equals, and we get 1.33 times 10 to the minus 8, and that would be joules, and that would be the energy stored on that capacitor. So again, remember, the trick is when we have more than one layer of dielectric and you want to find the charge and the capacitance and all that, you do have to Think about it in terms of this equation. The capacitance is equal to the charge divided by the sum of the voltages across these dielectric, and the way to find the voltages is to express it in terms of the electric field in each dielectric times the thickness of the dielectric. 
And of course, the electric field is found by this relationship right here, because you can think of a capacitor plate as kind of an infinite plate with charge, and so the electric field is equal to the charge density divided by epsilon sub naught without the dielectric, and charge density divided by k times epsilon sub naught with the dielectric, and that's a trick in doing these kind of problems. That's how we do that.